Does your pet rat have an injury it would like to heal? Well, even if it doesn't, okay, this supplement duo is still relevant because guess what? All living things are injured to an extent, at least at the micro level, okay? Accumulating micro injuries like microvascular injuries that reduce endothelial function, for example, is a hallmark of the aging process. And yes, these compounds ameliorate these micro injuries to an extent, especially if you reap the synergistic benefits by combining them. And of course, they do offer even more utility if your rat is currently afflicted with a musculoskeletal injury, whether it's an acute injury like a torn muscle or an overuse injury like tendonitis. Or maybe it just wants to recover faster from its workouts so it can increase its daily volume of cage pull-ups. Well, I believe the ultimate practical synergistic duo is BPC-157 and MK-677. So MK677, most of you are probably familiar with. It's a growth hormone secretagogue. And of course, we know growth factors like growth hormone are proliferative, meaning they increase the production of stuff in the body like collagen, uh, fibroblasts, uh, protoglycans, and even new blood cells, all crucial components that play a key role in the healing process. Now, BPC-157, this is a healing peptide derived from human gastric juice, and quite controversially, it is indeed banned by WADA. Alex Eubank was actually castigated online for implementing it, some even considering him to be no longer natty. So, you know, many people automatically consider peptides unnatural, which just showcases their ignorance of what a peptide even is. Peptides are just chains of amino acids. Protein is a polypeptide. Collagen peptides can be bought off Amazon. You know, some peptides like growth hormone releasing peptides have a higher propensity for side effects than other peptides like BPC-157. It's essentially side effect free and provides a multiplicity of healing related health benefits, which we'll discuss. So it exemplifies why it can be detrimental to be attached to the natural identity label because if you base that label off WADA's guidelines, you could miss the opportunity to take compounds like BPC-157, which will have an overall positive impact on your health. There's a plethora of research supporting its effectiveness in healing various components of the body and even evidence that it improves cognitive function. So its effects seem to be quite broad spectrum. And it being banned by WADA, although somewhat ridiculous, is also somewhat insightful. You know, they ban a substance for two reasons. It's performance enhancing or it's dangerous. The third reason is so vague and subjective, I don't even consider it a valid reason. <laughs> and because BPC-157 is not dangerous whatsoever, WADA must think it's significantly performance enhancing. More performance enhancing than terkesterone, since terkesterone is not banned yet. So, how does BPC-157 work? What are the mechanisms of action? Well, first, it enhances angiogenesis, so the formation of new blood vessels, which is crucial for tissue repair because new blood vessels increase oxygen and nutrient supply to the damaged area. It does this by enhancing vascular endothelial growth factor, a major signaling protein involved in the formation of new blood vessels. It also has been shown to modulate the inflammatory response, so reducing excessive inflammation, allowing the healing process to proceed. It does this by influencing the levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines and increasing the production of anti-inflammatory mediators like nitric oxide, which also enhances blood vessel dilation. BPC-157 also has a cytoprotective effect, meaning it can protect cells from injury or apoptosis, that's cell death. This is particularly important for the tissues in the gastrointestinal lining, which are exposed to harsh environments. So animal studies have actually shown BPC-157 to protect the stomach lining from stress, alcohol, and other drugs, which is pretty cool. Uh, BPC-157, it enhances the production of collagen. Studies show that BPC-157 enhances migration and proliferation of fibroblasts and other healing cells to the site of the injury. So this speeds up the repair process by quickly bringing the necessary cells to the damaged tissue where they can begin the repair process. More specifically, how does it do this? Well, this is where the synergy between MK677 and BPC-157 comes into play. So BPC-157 upregulates growth hormone receptor expression. So it essentially enhances the effectiveness of growth hormone in the healing process. So in this study, when growth hormone was added to the BPC-157 treated tendon fibroblasts, these cells showed a significant increase in proliferation. This upregulation it occurred in a dose-dependent and time-dependent manner, meaning that higher dosages, longer duration of exposure to BPC-157 increase growth hormone receptor expression at both the mRNA and protein levels. So again, that's pretty cool. So you can imagine the synergy here. MK677 increases growth hormone, 
And then BPC-157 makes that increased growth hormone even more effective. So that's why I'm such a big fan of this duo. Now, could BPC-157 be substituted for another healing peptide like TB-500? Yeah, TB-500 promotes similar beneficial healing effects. It has a similarly innocuous side effect profile. The reason I prefer BPC-157 is because its systemic effect seems to be more broad spectrum, so it affects more facets of the human physiology. TB-500 seems to be super effective specifically in the muscles and the tendons. Also, TB-500 is not as orally bioavailable, so you would need to inject it. And this is also one of the reasons why I prefer MK677 over other growth hormone releasing peptides like CJC1295 and ipamorelin. MK677 is orally bioavailable while the peptides are not. Also MK677, it stimulates the ghrelin receptor, which I consider quite beneficial for neuroplasticity. I did a whole video on that. So unlike the other peptides, BPC157 is orally bioavailable. Although the injectable form is more bioavailable, so it is more ideal to take. But for convenience sake, I like to take the capsule version. So it's bioavailability. It's not definitively quantified, but the best estimates put it somewhere in the 30% range, meaning the injectable BPC-157 milligram for milligram is three times more powerful. So the standard dosage of injectable BPC-157 is 0.25 to 0.5 milligrams daily. These Swiss Chem's BPC-157 pills, these are 0.5 milligrams. So generally when I take these, I take two to three pills daily alongside 10 milligrams of MK677, which based on the studies increases average GH by around 70% or so. And then that extra growth hormone is even more effective thanks to the BPC-157. So yeah, that's the synergistic healing duo that I am quite excited about. Both can be found at swisschems.is and of course are cheaper with code plus. So that's about it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.